Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make the inside of your Target store. And also this part two. Just so that everybody is on the same page, this video is part two. In part one, we did this. We built all of this in the first part. This is part two. If you haven't made all of this yet and you want to, check out the card system, description below, and the top of the comment section for part one to this video. It will look exactly like this. That is what the thumbnail looks like. I have just shown it you on the screen right now. And that's all there is to it. Once you have made your target, once you are at this point, we can get started. So now that all of that is out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, to get things started, you are going to need all of these materials that I am now showing you on the screen right now. Please do make sure that you have access to all of those and enough of those materials as well. We will be using some different ones later on too, but I will show you those before we need them. Pause the video if you have to, make sure that you've got all that stuff, make sure you're ready to build the inside and a little bit the outside of your target, and once you are ready, we can begin. So the first thing that we're going to do is work out all of the outside of target. We're going to make all of the car park and the surrounding walls and all of that fun stuff. We're going to begin this process by coming all the way to the front right hand corner of the target area. So where we have this smooth stone that kind of like borders around target, we want to find the front right hand corner of it. We want to dig in the ground four rows in front of the corner. One, two, three, four. And then we want to dig left by seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can join that seventh block back to the path. Continue digging another seven left of this corner block that we just connected. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And join that back to the path again. And we're gonna do this one more time. We're gonna take this row and we're gonna extend it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we're going to join it. So what we'll end up with is this shape. It kinda looks like a comb. Now we're gonna fill this shape in using yellow concrete. And basically sometimes in front of stores and supermarkets and stuff, you have like special spaces right in front of the store where perhaps uh, people with disabilities can park or perhaps it's like a taxi or a pickup point. It's basically just to add a little bit of a variance to uh, your target. What we are now going to do is we are going to take the front right hand corner of these special bay areas here and we're going to from this corner dig in the ground towards the entrance four rows. One, two, three, four. We're going to dig a fifth row but we're going to mark it out using white concrete and we're going to now do this pattern until we kind of get towards the boundary of our target. So we're going to do one, two, three in the ground, and then the fourth block is going to be white concrete. So if you count four and then place a white concrete in there, one, two, three, four, white concrete, one, two, three, four, white concrete, one, two, three, four, white concrete. That should leave us two rows on the end. Now these two rows, by the way, are going to be a pavement. I'm actually going to dig out the width of the area that we have kind of selected for our target. I'm going to dig out the width of these two rows that would be on the end of the white concrete row that we just placed. And I'm going to place some smooth stone in here. This is where the target will integrate with the rest of your city or town or wherever it is that you are building your target. We've always got to think about how they are going to meld into your environment. So, we have all of these rows of white concrete, don't we? But we're going to focus on this last row, and then we can kind of take it from there. I want you to extend this row of white to the left by seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And, of course, you're going to just fill that in with white concrete as we go. You're going to leave a gap in the ground, a gap of one, and then you're going to place a row of four brick slabs. One, two, three, four, like that. I want you to leave a gap of one in the ground, and then I want you to dig eight rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you can fill all of those with white concrete too. I'll show you the end result of this in a moment. On the end of this row of eight, we're going to leave a gap of four, or you can dig it. One, two, three, four. You can leave or dig that out. But on the end of the row of four, you want to place a brick slab, 
and then dig five more rows one two three four five and then we're going to place smooth stone inside here one two three four five place a brick slab on the end and then we are going to either leave or dig out a row of seven i'll dig it out one two three four five six seven and then we're going to dig a row of six one two three four five six and those six blocks are going to be white concrete so one two three four five six um, I'm going let me just put uh, some brick on the end here just so that you can visualize it a little bit better so this is what we have now hopefully that wasn't too complicated to do but in doing that you have actually done a huge amount of this build and let me show you why because it, it becomes very very easy to build the rest of the car park area now that we have all of this in here too so <clears throat> we're going to begin with the brick slab area here i want you to take the left slab and the right slab and i want you to extend them both forwards they want to extend forwards and become even and level with the first white concrete that we placed over there everything lines up you can extend both of those rows forwards like this and join them together on the end and you can see how those two correlate in a similar way, you can take the brick slabs that we have over here, and you can also extend them until they are the same length as the area over there, except you do not want to connect them this time. So you just want to kind of leave them as is. You can dig in between this particular pair of brick slabs. This is going to be a walkway. For those that don't have a car or perhaps they park all the way at the end of the car park and they don't want to walk through the actual driving area, this is a pavement sort of sort of thing that people can like walk up. It's basically safer than just walking on like the tarmac or uh, what have you. So we're going to place all of these smooth stone here and you can kind of see how once again this this would integrate into the city to kind of leave right on right from a pavement like right up to target. We're going to do some lines in the ground. Now, these lines are going to be horizontal on the end of the smooth stone. And we want to have like a row of white horizontally across the end of the path. Gap of one. Row of white. Gap of one. Row of white. Gap of one. Row of white. Now, I don't know whether you have these in America, but these are zebra crossings. What this basically means is, is that pedestrians, such as yourself or any, anyone else, once you're stood here, cars are meant to let you walk across here. So it's just like a nice, safe way to actually be able to like cross roads and stuff like that. Well, what else are we going to do? Well, where we have the white markers here over in the ground, we want to extend the white markers and we want to make them equivalent to the white white road that we kind of extended earlier so what that means is and let me just extend them all across and then you'll be able to see what i'm talking about instead of uh instead of me trying to explain everything you just want all of those white concretes to be the same width as the original but what's also fun and what is quite helpful is the fact that the white concretes here that are all separated by rows of three you want to do the same thing over here as well. So where you have this row of white concrete and that row, you want to do the same, right? So you want to figure out three rows in between all of the white concrete areas. You want to make all of the white concrete bays as wide as each other. And this is basically just like a place to park. So that's, that's pretty much all it is. It's just parking bays. You can put cars in here if you wanted to. You put, could put a cart return or a, a trolley return. It completely depends uh, what you call them. And um, you want to apply that as you as you go through. Like um, This is pretty much like a standard basic car park, right? It's, it's probably nothing special, but it does look good it does make sense and it will it, it does fit into our target but if you wanted something a little bit different then of course you add it so that's actually a huge amount of it done that's all of the markings done all we have to do is add some oak leaves to this particular part here this kind of like little planter that's what this um that's what this brick area is here equally so you don't have to have car parking spaces over there on that left side if you don't want to you could add a, another sort of planter like that but that is kind of like the car park i say kind of like that is the car park 
um, we can add a brick wall that goes all the way around the outside of our car park. I'm placing this on the white grid that we placed right at the beginning of the tutorial. When I say the beginning of the tutorial, I mean in part one. So this is the grid that we used to figure out where target was going to go inside of our grid and where, where it was going to be placed in our cities and such. So in placing the brick wall, you kind of get a really good idea that's looking great. You get a good idea of how big this place is and how it's all kind of like segmented. And I'm going to make the wall two rows high so no one can jump the wall. If you wanted to, you could place, say, iron bars on top of the wall, or you could place some leaves on top of the wall, or whatever you wanted to do, you know. As long as it looks good to you, then that is fine. But once you've placed the wall, and you've placed all of these markings, and once you've done all of that, you will be ready to completely dig out this entire area and replace it with grey concrete. Yes, you heard me correctly. This is not going to be a fun part of the tutorial. This is going to take a really long time. The plan is to dig out every single grass block that exists within the boundaries of our target area, which will look a little something like this. And of course, once all of that has been dug out, there is but one thing to do, and that is to fill the entire area in with our old pal, Grey Concrete, which would of course, once that's all done, like this. Woo, did that take a long time, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I'm well aware that you will have to do that for yourself. That takes a really long time to do. Trust me, I know, I literally just did it. If you have to, pause the video, make sure that you've got all that done, simply rip up the grass, replace it with grey concrete, it will look so so much better, this place looks insane now, and once you have done, we can mosey on into the inside of our build. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, take two. We can mosey on into the inside of our build and we can get things started in here. So the first thing that I want to do inside is literally just as we walk in, we're not even in the main store yet. I just want to add a couple of potted plants. This is gonna be made out of light gray glazed terracotta, flower pot on top, dead bush inside, oak leaves on top of that, and preferably we can also extend it up another row, but we've got some light source here, so I'm just going to leave it. And I'm just going to place two of these, just one each side, and later on we'll also carpet this area too, and then that'll just look a lot more appealing. But... Once you have added these two little bushes in here, I'd highly recommend also adding some sort of light source inside of the store. Now, I've added a lot of torches. We're going to be adding our own lights in later on, but for now, we, we have to see where we're building, don't we? So, that's, uh, that's pretty much necessary. For the next part of this, we're going to have to grab cauldrons, item frames. We will need coffee beans. We will also need paper or empty maps, it doesn't really matter which one. We need some red terracotta, tripwire hooks, quartz stairs, buttons, and uh, we also need a flower pot as well. So, I know, that seems like a lot. So, in a lot of stores and a lot of supermarkets and stuff, you'll often find that there are coffee machines, quite often near the entrance. So, we're going to start in the front left-hand corner here of the store. We're going to move to the right one and we're going to place a cauldron. Right of that, we're going to place a red terracotta, and we're going to extend it up by two. One, two. I want you to place two entire rows of red terracotta going right. I want you to extend the front left and front right sides forwards, with an upside down quartz stair in between those two rows, and a cauldron on the opposite side. We're going to stick a flower pot inside of this empty space with a tripwire hook above it, we're going to place item frames on the left side of the pot and the tripwire hook. In addition to that, above the cauldrons, we're going to stick beans in the item frames for the coffee machine, and we're going to stick paper in the, uh, in the actual cauldron ones. We're going to place buttons to the right of our machine, and then all we've got to do is put a little top on this thing. And it's actually quite a cool looking coffee machine. It, lo it looks quite like one, honestly. So uh, you might be able to even use this design elsewhere. It's, uh, it's not a bad looking coffee machine. You could even make it look a little bit better perhaps using some different colours. But that's what we're having so far. And that, that's pretty good. That's a cool part of the, uh, of the store. 
leaving a gap of one. We're actually going to need to grab more stuff uh, before we before we do that. Um, so now we have to make some other stuff. Um, to make some other stuff, we're going to need light grey concrete. We are going to need some quartz stairs. We will need some white concrete. We'll also need some quartz slab item frames, two kinds of chest, chest and just trap chest. You may also want to add some light, so I might recommend grabbing some torches. And perhaps you will also want to grab the dirt as well. So leaving a gap of one between this cauldron here, you want to place a light grey concrete. And you want to extend upwards by two rows. One, two. And we're going to extend three rows of white, one, two, three, right of the light grey. Place light grey concrete on the end, and then three more rows of white. One, two, three. Like this. We're then going to do another row of light grey concrete like this. And then you're probably thinking to yourself, oh, we're going to do that again. We're actually not, because from this back corner here of the build, we're going to want to place one, two, three rows of light grey concrete, and they want to extend forwards themselves two rows. So you can see there's actually, um, there's not that much of a gap. And we want to have this gap. You could also place an additional window here, by the way. That's also a, a possibility, and I might actually do that. So I'm going to leave a space for a window that we can fill in later. But what's important is that we continue our journey here where we have these rows of light grey, right? And we, we want to do a similar thing, and I'm just going to move the white and light grey together. I did not do that at all, did I? There we go. Um, so along this back wall, you kind of want to you want to do this pattern. You want to do two white, light grey, two white, light grey, and you want to do this so on and so forth until you'll you'll know when to stop. We pretty much reach the other end of the store, and it won't take us too long. There we go. So you'll reach this end. And you won't be able to repeat the pattern again. There always has to be a light grey concrete on the end, so we're not going to do that. And later on, we can turn this into an exit. But what we have to do is make all of the light grey concretes and all of the white concretes, we want to make them all three rows high. And then we're going to extend all of the light grey concretes forwards. We're not going to do the same with the white concrete though. So white concrete in between all of the light grey like this. Here we go, like this. I said that a bit too early, we weren't quite there. There we are, so just like that. And then we want all of the light greys to extend out as far as this, which you might think to yourself, oh, that seems a little far. I disagree. So we're going to extend it all <laughs> this far. And the reason being is because these are um, fridge slash freezers. Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, it is rather hard to fill up a supermarket or a store. If you want to add different sections to this uh, to this store, then feel free. But I've uh, I've kind of generalised a lot of this, and it does look good. But it it does have a little bit of repetition in it. So here we go. There's a load of freezers or fridges, and we're going to place quartz slabs all along the top of them like this, and we are going to fill all of these in with foodstuffs. So, mostly meat, actually. I think that you can actually get every single meat in these fridge, uh, fridge slash freezers, like this. And what we're then going to do is we are going to grab two things. We'll skip out on the, the chest for a sec. We're going to grab um, sea lanterns, iron trap doors, like this. And we are going to place sea lanterns in the backs of the bottoms of these freezers, like this. And I'm thinking about joining them together. Um... Or maybe placing some white concrete in front of the sea lanterns. So, um, you guys be the judge. Light grey concrete or white concrete? I'm going to go with light grey because this is where the door is going to go. Uh, for the... Oh, no. where the, the, This is where the door is going to go for all of the fridge slash freezers. So, again, I'll let you guys be the judge. You can place whatever you like. And, of course, you can customise these in any way that you want. This whole place is meant to be customised. We're going to place iron trap doors in front of the uh, bottom top parts of the white concrete, which sounds complicated, doesn't it? That sounds so confusing to say. But basically, the bottom pair of white concretes just place iron trap doors because it just looks like a shelf. 
And then if you want, you can either place another shelf kind of like here, and then you can place item frames. I actually quite like that. That, that actually looks a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place item frames above the iron trap doors like this. And then we're going to place uh, another set of shelves, I think. So you can either do that or, I mean, the original plan was to do this, which I also like. From the, from the outside, it actually looks quite good because it looks as though um, they're quite stocked up. So I've given you guys a, a couple of different ideas. And again, you know, feel free to, I mean, you could even uh, like do, you could have like one, one fridge like that and then the other could have two shelves and so on and so forth, you know? Do, uh, do as you will, pretty much. So now that we've done that, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to leave that at that and we'll come back to it later don't worry what i do want to do is i want to head back on over to these original fridges and i want to do a similar thing except we're only going to extend the light gray concrete one row forwards just one row we're going to place upside down quartz stairs at the base of these we're going to place item frames on the upper half of the fridge slash freezers these more fridges and then we're going to place quartz slabs on top and you can place some torches on the outsides of these if you want to keep things nice and bright. And this is where the chests come into play. There we go. Um, and you can actually like fill these up. Uh, you can place chests here and it can kind of advertise what is in the fridge slash freezer. And um, I don't know, it, it, ju it just makes it look a little bit better. But what's important is that we want to have another one of these, but kind of over here-ish. And the way that it works out is we want to take the sides, like the corners of this fridge, and we want to leave a gap of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And on this 11th block, we are going to, actually on the 12th block, because we want to leave a, a gap of that, we want to place... Uh, another light grey concrete so you can kind of see so you can see how this levels out you want to leave the gap of 11 and on the 12th block we place our uh, light grey concrete and we're going to extend it up by two one two we're going to place three upside down quartz stairs extending from the bottom one two three light grey concrete three more upside down stairs one two three light grey concrete we can extend these concretes upwards like so. Just like this. We can extend the light grey concretes backwards. And we can place white concrete in between them, just in the middle, here. And then on the opposite side, we want to place our light grey concretes extending out the back. And this is going to be a double-sided one. We're going to have upside down quartz stairs at the bottom. And we're going to place quartz stairs all the way along the top, just like this. So we can extend it all like so. Perfect. So as with all of the other fridges, I am going to place alternating chests inside of the base of the fridge. I'm going to place item frames to signify what is actually in the fridge. And I'm also going to place a little bit of light because this place could certainly use it at this point in time. Oh, and of course, I have to do the exact same thing on the other side too, don't I? So all these chests right here, item frames, that is wonderful so that is actually all of the fridges slash freezers kind of like placed um what we also want to do in between this pair of fridge slash freezers right here is we want to place some kind of like fresh produce and it works out to be that if you leave a gap of like one two three four and one two three four in between each fridge slash freezer you should be able to place i do believe a row of three grass or dirt or whatever it is you want to use a row of three by i do believe three here so like at the in between the end of this side of the fridge and freezer and you also want to do the same thing on the other side now we'll have something that should look like this and if you place some spruce trap doors around it or any kind of trap door as a matter of fact i mean you could use oak but you can kind of see through them but any other really um what we are going to do is we are going to hoe that and we are going to grow stuff inside of it and it'll just look like some sort of like fresh produce that uh that you can grab 
Um, but we're not going to do that late until later when we grab all of the seeds and all of the stuff to like fill up all of the uh, to fill up all of the fridge and the freezers and all of that fun stuff. And as a matter of fact, we've almost somewhat hit a wall with this, ladies and gentlemen, because we now need a whole new set of materials. We need some more stuff so that we are able to progress onto the next part of this. So I'm going to dump all of these. And we are going to grab a whole new set of stuff. So here are all of the materials that we are going to use to finish off the rest of this tutorial. Please do make sure that you have access to all of those materials and enough of them as well. And do bear in mind that perhaps there might be some repeat materials. But... Trust me, they are 100% needed. Alright, so once you have managed to grab all of those things for yourselves, ladies and gentlemen, we can get this party started. The first thing that we are going to do is make all of the tills or cash registers or, you know, whatever you want to call them, the place where you pay for your stuff, assuming you're paying. We want to line these up with the front set of windows towards the front of the build. And the way that we're going to do it is we are going to grab our red concrete. We're going to come to the front right hand corner of this like inside window. We're going to leave a gap of four. One, two, three, four. And on this fifth block, we're going to place a red concrete. Extend it backwards by three. One, two, three. And then a cross one like that. And we're going to leave a gap of two and we're actually going to make the exact same thing. So if you leave a gap of two, place two red concrete, gap of two, two red concrete, gap of two, two red concrete. And then you extend this right side forwards by three rows. Then we can pretty much do the exact same thing that we did that first time. And we want to place quartz stairs extending inwards from that little like hook that is on the end just like that. We want to place some grey carpet um, leading from where the seat is, which is the stairs, all the way to the end. So kind of like that. That's kind of like the belt that like drives things through. And um, we are also going to be adding like a little... You know how um, there's like a light that often tells you whether or not something's working? Well, that's what this is going to be. It's going to be three rows of... Uh, birch fence extended up towards the inside of the ends of the like cash register area and we're just going to place beacons on top and that's just going to kind of look uh, like oh this one's in use this one isn't this one's in use these all happen to be in use because uh, you don't have uh, different colors of beacon well not not like this anyway like there's not like one that's got like a red center or you know what i'm talking about so you know we've got like a whole set of that now which is looking pretty good what we also want to do is a load of shelves now these shelves don't actually even have anything on them these are pretty much just aesthetic but they do the job really really well and we're going to be placing bookshelves we're going to we're going to place them like this right so where we have this fridge slash freezer, it's actually a fridge, we're going to leave a gap of two, bookshelf. 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 Like this, right? These bookshelves are actually going to line up perfectly with the spaces in between all of the freezers at the back. We want to have rows of bookshelves that are equal in length to the freezer or to the fridge to the side spaced equally as the freezers are. So they're the length of the fridge and they are the width of part of the freezers, if that makes sense. And we are going to place some bookshelves on top. We want to make them two rows high, just like this, which is going to be perfect. Two rows high. And this is just going to represent, like, shelves. So, like, if you, you know, as you walk around a market, as you walk around a store, you're going to see loads and loads of shelves with loads of stuff on them. That's what these are, basically. Like, if you want to make these more complicated, you can. I did do that when I made a Kmart. I made it so that, like, you could place stuff on the shelves. But I actually think this happens to look really, really good anyway. Like, I, I think it looks quite cool. And you can, you're more than welcome to place some light on the ends of the shelves. As a matter of fact, I might even recommend it. You're going to want to really take liberty. Like, you, you're going to want to figure out what you want to do. Like, if, if you want a load of artificial light, you're going to have to add a lot of it. But if you don't, you're going to have to be quite conservative. It's kind of up to you. I want to have hanging lights um, hanging down onto the shelves. And it's quite easy to figure out where these lights go. They're made out of ender rods and iron trap doors. And this is how it works, basically, right? So where we have the end of this bookshelf here, we want to have an end rod 
It's kind of hard to figure out where to place it. There we go. We want to have an end rod coincide with where this bookshelf is. And we want to have the same thing here on the other end, so like this. And we want to have end rods spaced two blocks in between each other and they are going to coincide with where the uh, with where the bookshelves are so they want to kind of like just hang hang down and it's, it's basically just going to highlight let me make sure i'm doing that in the right place it's just going to highlight where these things are so just like that and that just like this perfect um we also want to have another pair of these we're going to have one here like um pretty much like where the produce section is and we kind of want to have have one placed either side of the produce section make sure it's placed in the same place i think mine is one row away um just like that and we also want to have them of course on the end here it wants to no it would be there so they still want to line up um, with the other end rods, but hopefully you guys can kind of see like the system there, right? Above all the bookshelves, and we also have just two either side of, uh, of this section here. And basically what you want to do is you want to place an iron trap door hanging in between both pairs of the end rods. And um, it's going to take you a little while to do because they're quite kind of... Uh, annoying to place to be quite honest they're a little bit annoying to place but um it's well worth doing though uh it it will look it, it will look quite cool it adds uh, a little bit of character to the build honestly once it's done so that's uh, that's what the lights are going to look like and these are just going to hang throughout so they're they're going to connect together long ways like this they're not going to connect together, well, short ways, I guess you'd say, wouldn't you? So, yeah, they're going to hang together long ways, just like this. And it's going to make up a decent amount of light. Um, again, they, you could add more light. Um, some parts of this store are still quite dark. But at a certain point, you've kind of got to say to yourself, like... Where, where do you stop? <laughs> like, uh, where do, do you just make it so that the entire store is 100% insanely lit? Or do you, you know, or do, or, or at a certain point you're like, oh, it's, it's quite bright in here already. I mean, it's probably, it's not going to get too much brighter than this, like it's, uh, unless we add some more. But um, yeah, I, it's something that I'm kind of struggling with. Like, and we, I don't even have the torches in the original. So yeah, it's something that you've just got to, just got to sit and think about and deliberate and think about for yourself. So we'll add all of these and also these here too. We just want to add all of these and it is a bit of a tedious process quite honestly but uh well worth it i think definitely well worth it because it's it's a cool hanging light it's it's stuff that you do see like supermarkets have like weird lights uh weird in a good way though like um weird in an interesting way and uh, i kind of like them so i've tried to emulate this here and uh, i did a similar thing using carpet um end rods and carpet um, in Kmart because I, I have also made Kmart so if you're in kind of like a I want to build giant stores kind of like if you're in that sort of mode then um, there's also a Kmart that has a completely different interior to this although I do prefer this one if I was telling you guys the truth um, yeah there we go so now we have all of those lights which are, which is wonderful you know it's all nice and well it's a well lit up and all of that um, what I'd also like to do is oh also we should um, add some carpet. We're gonna need the hoe. We're gonna need some seeds and we're gonna need all of this meat as well But let, let's start off by hoeing these uh, these grass areas here and let's place different seeds inside um, This will look good once it's grown. It looks a little bit goofy now perhaps but it, it actually looks quite good when it's grown and um, it, it makes sense once you fill in all the item frames and stuff um, You can add some carpet that kind of um, leads you in and out the store. Like I like the idea of having some like red carpet that kind of like leads you um, through the doorway here, and you know add as much or as little of this as you like. Um, I like the idea of having some carpet like in between the um, fridges, like in between the um, these little two produce bins or whatever you would call it. So like here. And I like the idea of having some here. And we'll probably have a horizontal one too. So red carpet here and here. And probably maybe say the... Yeah, maybe say the width of the till area here. And the 
Also, that kind of looks like a happy face, or, or maybe a clown face, hang on. If I would have left out some of the, uh, the white there, or some of the red, then that would have actually looked like a face. It kind of does though, doesn't it? Like, if, if I do this, that kind of looks like a face. <laughs> or a rabbit or something like that. Anyway, the point of the matter is, we want to have this. So, some nice red carpet, just to make it look a little bit more alluring, a little bit, a, a bit more inviting, perhaps. Um, maybe figure out some more places to add torches because again, it, it is a little bit dark. It is, I mean, if you wanted to, you could, if you stuck them in the middles of the aisles, that would probably do it. That would be a sufficient amount of light. Um, but it depends how many torches you want to see. It depends uh, if that would bother you or not. But I, I think that it is rather well lit up for the most part. Um, these seeds, I, I guess it's not, is it not well lit enough in this area for these seeds? It, if you were to bone meal it immediately, it, um, I think it'd actually be okay. But what we're going to do now is we're going to fill up this back line of fridges. We're going to need birch fence, um, blue stained glass, but more importantly, we're going to need a lot of, a lot of meat and stuff, or whatever it is you want to put inside these fridges. So for the fridges, I'm going to recommend you fill them up with food. Of, uh, of some sort. So any sort of food that would make sense to be frozen, or it doesn't even matter if it doesn't make sense, you know, any sort of food that would would make sense to be frozen or would not make sense to be frozen, you can kind of choose. Um, you can repeat yourself, it doesn't really matter, you know, it's, it's all for show anyway, it all just looks good. And once you've filled up all of those, um, I'm gonna recommend you place some light blue glass in front. Um, this is where the doors are going to be and they're not even openable so that's that's why it's like it, it doesn't really matter what you put in them as long as you're happy as long as you think it looks all right you can put a variety in there that would probably look best but for the sake of you know easiness and for the sake of the fact that this is not my um you know that this isn't in my actual city this is kind of like a tutorial world if it were in a city i'd probably pay a little bit more attention to detail but um that's something that you're going to have to figure out for yourself but these are just some nice big fridges that you can put uh, put stuff in and they need a handle and that handle is going to be birch fence it's going to be placed either to the left or right whichever whichever side you want to put it on really of the middle of the glass and um, it'll just look like a door handle kind of like that and you'll see that once you fill in the item frames it really does give the place quite a bit of character just like that it's looking good now, when it comes to the, like, the fridges as well, like, um, in the item list, I'm sure that it will have given you some, some instructions, but pretty much you're just gonna wanna put any, any sort of food stuff, so whether that be mushrooms, whether that be eggs, whether that be, um, we have, I never know where to find them, but, like, carrots or apples, where are we? I always have to go in the big menu for this, where are we? Is it further down? Or, wait, I, I, think that, I, th I think that maybe we probably went a bit too far. Did we go too far? This entire video is going to be me trying to search for carrots and apples. There we go, perfect. So we can have like potatoes, carrots. You know, you can you can place all sorts of all sorts of different things in here. So as long as it makes sense, I mean, you could even like watermelon and stuff as well. You guys get the idea. Just fill them up, make them, uh, make them look all good. And uh, once you've done that, I mean, but like I said, if you bone meal these areas, it'll actually look, um, it'll actually immediately grow. It shouldn't pop out. Sometimes it pops out. Where I think it's, I think if it's not sure if there's enough light or, or something, I, I don't quite know. But like if you immediately bone meal it, that solves the problem. We're, we're looking pretty good in here. I mean, the only thing that um, you might want to do, like, like I mentioned earlier, is you may want to have like a... Uh, a window here, which would just be made out of black stained glass pane, nothing fancy, just a little window here. Um, we have an ulterior exit, perhaps a fire door, or perhaps something else. Like This could even lead to like a little warehouse if you wanted to build one for yourself. Um, but we could have like a, a little exit here. Um, this could be made out of like, if, if it's like a fire door, then perhaps like um, red concrete above it, and perhaps like just a couple of doors, so nothing, nothing too crazy really. Uh, if you want to add some like chests above the windows here, then I think that that could look cool too. So just to make it look like extra stock and stuff, um, you could hang lanterns up here too. You could put paintings, you could put paintings here. Um, 
It depends how far you want to go with it. I'm sure that you guys will kind of like figure out like I I don't like this or I like that. You know, you'll you'll kind of sort of figure out like how how you want things. So like you can place like these here and that'll have it. To, well, that's probably not what I want. Can, can can we not? There we go. So you know you can kind of just um. You can play some paintings and stuff and they kind of look like advertisements and posters and all all sorts of fun stuff like that. You can do that above there. But ladies and gentlemen, we've, we've actually sort of completed this place. This is what the inside looks like. And I'm pretty happy with it. I hope that you guys are too. So this is what your target should look like once it has been 100% fully completed, ladies and gentlemen. Now we have a car park. We have walls, we have a completely loaded interior, we have produce, we have things to sell, we have cashiers, we have all sorts of stuff and I'm pretty happy about it. I think that this place looks great and I hope that you guys do too. And that's it. I do hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you are new around here, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do consider subscribing for more city-related tutorials for all of the things that I'm going to be putting on the channel. Click that little bell. That'll make sure that you get all my stuff sent directly to your sub box. If you do want to make any more city-related builds, of which we have a massive variety, we are doing all sorts of different stuff, got loads of cool stuff coming up in the future, please check out the card system, description below, and the top of the comment section, you'll, you'll be able to find all sorts of really, really cool things there. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye!